Hi everyone, welcome to the Highlights from Ukraine podcast, your daily audio summary of the latest news reported in the Ukrainian media. For 502 days, Ukraine stands strong against the forces of the Russian invasion. In his evening video address, President of Ukraine Volodymyr Zelensky said that on the eve of the NATO summit in Vilnius, everyone recognizes that Ukraine deserves to be in the alliance. Not now, there is a war, but we need a clear signal, and we need this signal right now, said the president. He pointed out that Ukraine is de facto already in the alliance, as its weapons are the weapons of the alliance, its values are what the alliance believes in. Vilnius must confirm all this. According to Zelensky, the work on the wording of such confirmation is still ongoing, but we already understand the fact that Ukraine will be in the alliance. He also said that it is an honor for him to represent such people and such Ukraine. Based on that, the media assumed that Zelensky plans to take part in the summit in person. Political sources informed that U.S. President Joe Biden plans to meet Zelensky in Vilnius, reports European Pravda. He will try to persuade Ukraine's leader that removing a number of bureaucratic obstacles and reforms as well as a large security commitment from the United States and some NATO allies is the maximum that Kyiv can get in Vilnius this year. The German media Bild, based on the internal government document, informs that Berlin is blocking a decision in favor of Ukraine on its path to NATO, reports Fakte. According to the publication, while many countries led by France, the UK and Poland are in favor of inviting Ukraine as soon as the ceasefire with Russia begins, Berlin believes that Ukraine should follow the membership action plan already mentioned in relations with Ukraine in 2008. This plan envisages numerous steps and conditions that Kyiv would have to fill before receiving an invitation to NATO. At the same time, according to a confidential document, the U.S. declared its agreement to withdraw from the membership action plan for Ukraine, provided further reforms are carried out. But Germany will not agree to any wording that would create the impression of a fast track to the accession of Ukraine, any mention of the invitation or any mention of Ukraine's rightful place in NATO in the final document of the summit. Minister of Foreign Affairs of Ukraine Metro Kuleba urged official Berlin to not block Ukraine's fast accession to NATO, reports Suspilne. He called on Berlin not to repeat mistakes made by Merkel in 2008 when Germany and France opposed Ukraine's membership and the granting of the membership action plan for the country to join the alliance. This decision is seen by many in Ukraine as the reason why Russia felt that it could invade the country in 2014. Earlier, Kuleba said that NATO alliance members agreed to go past membership action plan with Ukraine. We would really appreciate if you could rate us ideally with 5 stars in the apps where you are listening to this podcast. This way more people would learn about the highlights from Ukraine and truth about Russia's invasion. The German defense concern Rheinmetall plans to open an armored vehicle plant in Ukraine within the next 12 weeks, reports Militarny. CEO of Rheinmetall Armin Paperger said in an interview with CNN that they will also train Ukrainians to maintain tanks and other armored vehicles produced at the plant. The plant will reportedly be located in Ukraine's western regions. The company hopes that the plant in Ukraine will produce about 400 tanks a year and will cost 200 million euros. Moreover, it is also planned to produce and repair the Fuchs armored carrier there. Paperger stated that the plant may be protected from potential Russian attacks. Also, the Turkish company Baikar started construction of a factory for the production of Bayraktar strike drones in Ukraine, reports Gromatske. Minister of Strategic Industries Alexander Komishin said that the building of the large Bayraktar plant had been agreed upon a few years ago. Then there were shutdowns and scandals. But today, this plant is starting to be built. The U.S. has warned the Kremlin of imminent liability if Russia creates a nuclear disaster at the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant, reports Ukrainform. U.S. State Department spokesman Matthew Miller stressed that the Russian leadership should think carefully about whether it wants to risk creating a nuclear disaster, because if it happens, the international community will absolutely hold Russia accountable. He added that the International Atomic Energy Agency should have full access to all parts of the nuclear power plant, and Russia should facilitate this on the ground. Thank you for listening to the Highlights from Ukraine podcast. 
We are a commercial initiative of just two people, and we need your help to grow. Share information about the podcast, rate us in the app, subscribe to our Patreon. With your support, we are getting better. We call on you to demand from governments of your countries to impose the toughest sanctions possible on Russia and its citizens to stop their invasion of Ukraine.